And also, when being alone uh, in the beginning, there is a lot of things that has to be done, and they are not oftenly uh, a part of your like business. It's more like fixing small stuff. So fixing right. a website, you need to. So I have contact with a really uh, good software developer who does my website, and uh, which name is Philip. He's really good, and um, I need to get a. Uh, a person to fix the economics and so it's a, it's a lot of like finding people in the beginning to to help you and also doing a lot of work on your own and that's that's tough in the beginning but once you get the ball rolling uh, you kind of um, you kind of get the process more smooth and you will get more time in your uh, lifestyle i think So hi everyone, welcome back to the Simple Converse Show. Today with me I have Edward. Um, Edward, can you give a short introduction of yourself for the audience? Yes, so my name is Edward Equal. I'm the founder and CEO of Garm Studios, a production company based in Gothenburg. Um, and Edward, you're also a student of, I think, industrial design, industrial That's true. engineering at Chalmers. Um, so let's begin by talking about your journey within, uh, I think, uh, photography and the film industry how did that begin when did it begin and what was the process like basically so i think everything starts with a passion for film and photography uh, i was on the way to a family trip and my father bought me a gopro and at first i was like okay uh, let's see what i can do with it so basically in the beginning it's all about like pressing record on the camera and that was at first but later I figure out, okay, can we do something with this material? Can we edit it? Can we do it with music? How will it look in that shape of form? So I started making like YouTube videos, uh, travel videos, and uh, that was how I started. And uh, then I, the interest uh, kind of gradually uh, evolved and I bought my own uh, camera. So. Uh, that was when I was get, kind of getting more into photography and filmmaking. And also, I got my first clients. And at this time, I didn't have a company. So it was a lot of working for free, uh, developing experience, getting better. And uh, the year after I graduated my gymnasium, uh, I started a uh, company on my name and um, started to get paid clients so that was basically a short story right um so one sort of curious thing i have in my mind is that um when we are starting out with something new such as photography or maybe uh, the more popular term right now the field of coding um oftentimes a lot of people uh, when they start out uh, they kind of get overwhelmed by the amount of topics that you can cover within that area um, that's kind of the scene that happened with me when I was studying mathematics uh, I used to look at mathematics and I was so confused because you know you can do a lot of things with numbers you can uh, you start off with the basic addition subtraction multiplication you can go all over to calculus and then uh, whatever the PhD people do with fractals and all of that uh, so there's a sign, kind of like overwhelming emotion that comes within a person when they're starting how would you say is there a particular way to uh, keep your mind basically open-minded during the process of getting into filmography and photography? I would say like in the beginning it's a lot of problem solving. You will you will uh, face a wall where you kind of you don't get further. You need to um, obtain a bit of information and uh, how I did this was through YouTube basically. So it's all about learning uh, through mistakes I would say so right. um, you a problem occur and you try to solve it and I do it with uh, YouTube uh, search on forums it's all about being driven and kind of don't give it up because everything is out there you don't need to go to film school you don't need to um, I mean everything is on the internet right now so everything everything can be learned you just need to do it right I think to add on to that what I would say is that uh it might seem overwhelming and like because you know for example when you're coding you can write a thousand lines you can write two thousand lines uh you can make 
your code more efficient in different ways by using different algorithms uh, but what's important is focusing on what you're currently doing even if you're just making a simple algorithm for adding two numbers uh, focusing on how to implement that correctly is what is important and the same applies for film uh, for cinematography or photography where you start off with one factor for example taking the right angle or uh, yeah. making sure that the video is in shaking so once you perfect mm. one topic then you can move on to the other instead of just being overwhelmed all the time by uh, how many topics exist within that field uh, of course you can't learn everything like at first you need to yeah. take it in steps and also in the beginning the gear is not important just use what you have and then gradually make yourself better with the gear you have then you step it up then you buy like a gimbal you buy a better camera you buy lights so it's not about the gear just try to learn what will you have and stay positive try to be a problem solver i'd say right and it's basically what you said it starts uh, step by step there's no way of covering all steps by one and not st- skipping steps basically right. um but if we move on to the topic of i think cinematography in general um what is the feel like from an inside perspective because from an outside perspective what i can say is that uh the most famous ones are like uh, you know hollywood making films watching perhaps commercials or um music videos for the famous rappers but what yeah. is it like working from within the field what's the perspective like from that yeah so i mean my view is mostly like corporate videos i do a lot of work for business to business so i do uh, maybe a lot of interviews i would say but also product product photography and stuff like that but i'm really eager to get more into music videos and my view on the film industry um i would take it in like a business perspective i would say people will always need content there will always be a need for something that moves something that makes the viewers um really interested in what you do so there is like unlimited jobs in this field and you just need to be driven and try to see catch all the balls you need to you need to really be on the front front side of the industry so to say you need to be open and available and that's a, another thing you need to say just yes to a lot of things you need to be available i would say that's mm. that's like the first thing so if a company sees that you you are you're actually trying to get this job they will be more likely to to give this opportunity so i i feel like make sure to be a yes sayer not a no sayer right and when you're working for example let's start with the let's also discuss the the i think the duration of a project um as you were kind of mentioning before in our conversation that a lot of the for example if you're making a short film or a music video they're treated like projects right uh so essentially it's a kind of similar to a project uh, a company uh, publishes or a company has for its employees uh, whether it's a car company or whatever kind of a company it is so if we start with the topic of uh, what the duration of a project looks like in cinematography um because as we were kind of discussing prior to the conversation of the podcast that uh, a project is a bit unique in terms of uh, when you're doing it in cinematography versus when you're doing it in corporations so yeah. what is that sort of difference and what does the duration of a project looks like yeah so usually i get a email or a linkedin request or something from a client and we start the contact on email um and we usually sometimes we book a meeting to have a physical meeting and uh, then we discuss how this project will work out uh, they have a lot of uh, ideas and i have a lot of ideas and we will kind of mix them together and uh, try to make it as good as possible so it's a lot of uh, communication back and forth between the client and me uh, and my company so um, usually we book a film day uh, where we will film the project and we meet up and we usually we are at the client's office and they uh, try and kind of give a location where they feel like this is a good spot to film uh, and then i give my insights on uh, like the more technical stuff the camera stuff how will this work out 
how will we uh, get the nice angles how will the actors stand to get the best possible lighting and also it's a lot of gear of course uh, when uh, getting to the client so I usually have a big production bag that I bring with me and uh, there is a lot of lights and setup that has to be done in the beginning and uh, when the film day is done I go to the office and I send over the material that I have uh, filmed and then the client can kind of give their view on it they can uh, if I done an interview they get to um, see which parts are the best content wise so uh, this is what I want to have in the interview so to say uh, and then I do the more creative work I cut the uh, whole interview between angles I usually have a three camera setup uh, so I cut between the angles I uh, mix in b-roll and it's a lot of uh, communication between me and the client always uh, when I have the first version done, I send it over to the client, they get to critique the work, they get to give feed feedback on the work, and I uh, act accordingly. I uh, kind of switch the parts that they have uh, maybe told me to switch, or uh, add the parts that are missing, and so it's a lot of uh, always interacting with the client, making sure that they are happy what we are doing. Right. So from what I kind of understood from that is the project management aspect of uh, cinematography is a lot hands on, um, unlike what. Uh, so the difference would kind of be what a lot of corporations would do is the planning part. Um, the planning is kind of taking a uh, it's kind of taking with hold as the process is going on of filming and basically editing. So all of that kind of sums up the project. Uh, of a film uh, in comparison to a project of a corporation or perhaps uh, any other kind of field uh, yeah. but now if we come to talk about uh, your company uh, if you could just give a short introduction of what your company basically does uh, in terms of what it aims to provide its clients what do the clients look like is it just for gen is it for general people is it for like big businesses or how does that work yeah so garm studios is a production company based in gothenburg sweden uh, we do mostly corporate work as for right now, but we are really eager to get more into music videos, short films and stuff, stuff like that. So uh, we would be more than happy to get more creative work, so to say, not only working with businesses, also doing our own passion projects that could be interesting to a bigger audience, I'd say. So as for right now, uh, a lot of corporate work, would be fun to get more into passion projects right uh, one more sort of aspect i'm curious about is if we come to talk to uh, or if we come to talk to talk about the day of what it looks like for you as a founder of a film film company uh, because if we talk about for example the day of a ceo of we often see that the ceos of uh, mega corporations they, they kind of sums it up in meetings and perhaps uh, scoping out their company's goals and discussing that but what does it look like for the founder of a newly founded film company like you yeah so for me it's a busy day of course uh, I also study at the university and I'm the only one in the company as of right now. So uh, there is a long day, I would say. So usually it starts up in school and I uh, do the work that has, been do has to be done there and I go home and uh, do the work. So it's basically a long day. And I wish I had more than 24 hours a, a day, of course, but uh, Unfortunately, there is only 24 hours, so I have to um, be effective in my work, I would say. And also, when being alone uh, in the beginning, there is a lot of things that has to be done. And they are not often uh, a part of your like business. It's more like fixing small stuff. So fixing right. a website, you need to... So I have contact with a really uh, good software developer who does my website. and. Uh, which name is Philip, he's really good, and um, I need to get a uh, a person to fix the economics. And so it's a, it's a lot of like finding people in the beginning to, to help you, 
and also doing a lot of work on your own. And that's that's tough in the beginning, but once you get the ball rolling, uh, you kind of uh, you kind of get the process more smooth, and you will get more time in your uh, lifestyle, I think. And um, but in the beginning, it's a lot of work, of course. Uh, you you just have to uh, imagine that it will get better. I think. Right. So in the beginning, it's kind of like it's self-reliant on you totally because you're the only one in the company. Uh, but I think a good point point that you brought up was how uh, even though it's a film company, there's aspects of, for example, software development, which maybe you're not certain of, or maybe you don't have the skills for it right now as like a new founder or maybe any founder for that matter. Uh, then a good way of handling that would be outsourcing those skills, uh, yeah. as you said, by probably hiring a software developer or a website designer. So that's a good way of, uh, I think, handling skills which are not necessarily required for your company because it's a film company, for example, but they're still required for other kind of work such as website building, which is not yeah. so often. You just do it once and then maybe there's small maintenance here and there uh, per month or per year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say also the, the good part about being a founder of a company in today's age is that you can actually use platforms like Upwork or Fiverr and the process is much more smoother than it was just 10 years ago. So, mm. I mean, you can, maybe you need a nice logo design or a good graphic profile. Just source it uh, from a person Freelancer. sitting on Upwork. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's that easy. So I feel like I'm really happy that I'm doing this in this age and time and that I'm also young and uh, can know the technical stuff about this this field. So, yeah. Right. I think that's a nice point to bring up that uh, we often look at freelancing as just opportunities for ourselves. For example, oh, you want to do freelancing? Okay, uh, maybe I can be a freelancer myself. We, we often forget to look at it from the point of view of a user. Uh, from the point of view of a customer that we can actually get something done from freelancers as well so oh. that's a great point that you brought up uh, now if we move towards the topic of management in your company uh, as you said it, it recently began and uh, uh, managing all the stuff is kind of reliant on you uh, but as you might have had experience with other companies as you said your business was primarily b2b uh, previously yeah. uh, if you have maybe interacted with other film companies what is kind of the management process in, in film companies look like? Because I recently had a, a, a founder of a news company and I asked him a question about management and journalism and he explained how the management process was required them to be very agile, uh, meaning that they had to be very uh, quick in terms of the decisions that they had to take because a, a piece of information, basically news, uh, it can go from here to there in a matter of seconds. So they had to act very fast. So their management was of that sort. What is the management from that perspective of your of a film company? Yeah, so usually a film company manager or a director always have a lot of people around them. They have the uh, the grip, the ones holding the lights and stuff, and they have the director of uh, photography holding the camera. They have a lot of people around them, and the set is really uh, kind of tailored. They have a lot of experience and they have um, their kind of uh, parallel working together uh, and also everybody is really creative and that's what's fun about this everybody is creative and they want to create good content or good films or you know there's a creative workflow and i think that's a that's actually a good way of working because when people have fun and people uh, uh, like work together uh, they are doing better I think uh, but for me I would say that I don't have this kind of experience that I work on a big production team I'm at most me or one one more so um, I would say it's, um, it's it's kind of isn't the same as like a big production it's more uh, like working for, uh, for businesses, they don't have the uh, the need of a big production crew. There is mostly uh, just need content for social media or for um, 
an ad or something. So I, I feel like um, it's it's in different industries, I'd say. Right. So I think a good point that you brought up was uh, uh, how a lot of uh, basically a lot of crew members are kind of an additional an additional resource over uh, basically the major resources that you need as a film company. Um, I think also one more point that you brought up was is that it's a very creative field. So even yeah. though there might be one person, there might be 10, per, uh, 10 people, uh, what really depends is uh, in a creative field, if you're able to join the dots, uh, and the dots could be anywhere from uh, lighting to an angle, so perfecting each lighting uh, as per the angle of the shot that you're taking. Um, I think that sums it all up. And uh, it was a great podcast with you, uh, learning a lot about the filmmaking process. And uh, I think this was a different perspective in terms of learning uh, about films through uh, founding a film company and basically taking a look at that and even smaller projects. Uh, But thank you for being on the show, Edward. I really appreciate it for taking out your time. And uh, I hope to see uh, also a part two later on physically. Uh, so that we can discuss, I think, more areas in more depth so that we can jump into the depth of certain areas, whether it's the filmmaking process or uh, adjusting the lightning for anywhere from, from that to this. Uh, of course. But, right. But thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much.